I read a lesson this week, and it says we have four choices with these people from the past, with these negative messages from the past. We have four choices. We can resent, we can consent, we can invent, invent, or we can prevent. Well, first, we can resent. And I'm not going into that because we've spoken about that. We've all done it. Holding resentment doesn't work. Enough said. All right, really. I'm not going to go into holding resentment. What is resentment? I think I'll pour poison into this glass because I don't like the other person. And then I'll drink it myself. That's resentment. Enough said. Right, Carol? Second, we can consent. Consent to what? Consent to the mind of God working through us? Or we can consent to the mind of the other person working through us? You have the choice. God or the negative opinion. Your dream or all the I can't people in your life. God as, as the vision, as expansion, as greatness, or people who tell you you can't and you're small. That's a, that's a choice. You consent to one or the other. There is no middle ground. It's A or B. Or third, we can invent. Invent what? We always can invent a brand new opinion. We can invent today a brand new relationship, a brand new understanding, and we can put some context in to the opinion, just like you heard me do. When I realized that that nun never sung a note in all my years of school, I thought, ah, now I understand. And fourth, we can prevent. We can prevent negative people from ever having power in our life to start with. And so as we allow ourselves to select with discernment, with deliberation, like Dr. King said, who's who in our mind, then we say, hey, I, I, I think I'll choose positive people. I think I'll call encouraging and inspiring men and women. I think when I have an idea, I'll share it with people that say, you know, you can do that. I think I'll choose God over the lesser opinion. I think I'll better appreciate the love of God when I recognize it is in every situation and there is no spot where God is not. And even if it wasn't expressed, even if I go back to that parental figure, even if I think about those authority figures, even when Chris went back to his stepdad, as Dr. Oliver pointed out two weeks ago, there was a gift. This is not who I want to be in my life. Sometimes the greatest gifts are given to us for us to unwrap them. And so finally, church, if we really want to heal from the past, if we want to really heal from these lesser opinions that we carry around, that we've empowered, that we need to take ownership of ourselves today and say, all the power is with me right here and right now. If we really, really want to hear it, heal it, you know what I'm going to say? We have to check ourselves. You know, this is an inside job. All the time. New Christian thought, it is an inside job. Let peace begin. Let it begin with me. It doesn't matter what's going on outside. My role in this great universe, it's not to change the world. My job in this great universe is to work on me, me, me. And so we can check ourselves in the present. I'll give you an example. Did you ever catch yourself turning into someone from your past right before your very own eyes? Ah, that's a sign. There's somebody in there, and they're still haunting you. We saw this happen, a great example in the movie The Pursuit of Happiness. Chris Gardner, you remember the movie, and, and, and we played this clip, I believe, last year. But this clip is powerful. It's him and his son are playing basketball. The son is having a great time. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Chris says, you know, 
You're probably not going to excel at basketball. You know, you'll probably be mediocre at best, so you should try other things. Now, you know, there's only love coming through that because it's always, you know, love that would say, focus on your education, focus on schooling. That's not what was said. This is my inference of what was trying to be said. Don't count on, you know, a sports scholarship. But, but what happens is, is you see his son go from having fun to throw the ball away and walk away. But Chris, 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 he caught himself right there turning into his stepfather. Chris says, hey, 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 come back here. Don't ever let somebody tell you that you can't do something, not even me. You got a dream, you got to protect it. People can't do something themselves. They want to tell you that you can't do it. If you want something, go and get it. Period. This is how we respond in ourselves when that old voice comes up. Says, I am going to grab this. I am going to go beyond the messages I was told yesterday. I am going to achieve greatness. Every one of us here, we have to bear fruits. Fruits of positive ideas and positive energy. Ideals that give us and provide methods and plans and designs that create our dreams before our very eyes. We are all here today and we are here every day because we have something to give. I know you have something to give in this world because you're alive. The simple act of being alive means we can give something. Even if it's a smile, if it's a hug, if, 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 if it's outreach, you know, we are going to give because we can breathe. And in our very human nature, we're endowed with dreams and visions and greatness. There's no one of us who shoots for mediocrity in our life. And so every one of you here have a vision and a dream. I don't know what that is for you, but you do. Write it on a prayer request. Write it on your connection card. Write it over and over and over and over again every week. You cannot outpray God, I promise you. God operates in the realm of divine and perfect ideas. Every one of us is heavily charged with God ideas. And, and our role is to remember the truth of who we are. And when we remember that every one of us is capable of changing our life, these ideas revolutionize our existence. You will be amazed, every one of us, what you can do with your life if you're willing to stop allowing past messages to predict your present. I have a message for you today. There is greatness in every one of you. That's my message, and so it is. Amen. Amen.